next part is how do we use these financial statements to make some kind of conclusions about the company of course that is what is one of the key roles of any financial analyst looking at uh, the financial statements of the company and based on that trying to come out with some conclusions about the performance of the company for that we are talking of some kind of financial analysis uh, techniques i mean earlier also we have discussed some of them like looking at the total income statement we can do a profitability analysis of the company looking at the total balance sheet we can do a liquidity analysis or solvency analysis of the company like that the most common set of ratios most common set of calculations they have been tabulated and typically uh, we do these kind of uh, calculations and try to assess the performance of the company the liquidity of the company the solvency of the company the efficiency of the company the valuation of the company these are so many dimensions in which we typically evaluate the company by comparing it with the past and also by comparing it with the competitors the same ratio just like common size analysis can help us in comparing across the years and also across the competitors the same uh, ratio analysis also can be done across the years and also across the competitors and uh, uh, in that also what we are suggesting is okay if it has improved or uh, uh, deteriorated or what has happened to the performance of the company some of the key thing before we start into the calculations aspect some of the key things that we need to understand is what are the goodness of ratios the ratios whatever we calculate will form an important base in the future for projecting your future cash flows and as a financial analyst the core job remains to be the valuations the core job of the financial analyst is valuation right the, the uh, any any financial analyst equity research or fixed income analyst or derivatives analyst or whatever analyst we are calling as any investment analyst the core job is performing valuations of the whether it is the real estate or hedge funds or whatever it is and for that valuations you require future statement if it is at least equity valuation you require future financial statements not the past and the future financial statements have to be prepared based on the present financial statements itself and the most common thing which uh, people use to prepare future financial statements is the common ratios historically they compute the ratios for the last 5 years or something if they are very much consistent they'll say from the future also i'll put the same number for the ratio because some ratios they'll allow they will they will appear to be more consistent year over year probably if i look at uh, profitability ratio okay for the last 5 years the company is between 12% to 14% only what is the problem in me assuming the next year also they will be around 12 to 14 if 5 years they have been at a similar kind of number probably the 6th year also assuming they will be in the same range is not a wrong thing like that if i assess so let's say if i talk about uh, employee cost as a proportion of total sales if i am seeing for last 5 years if the employee costs are around 5% of the total sales there is no harm in me assuming that it would be 5% for the next couple of years also unless the company changes drastically saying we are replacing people with machines unless they make such kind of statements i can still reasonably assume that the next year employees cost also will be around 5% of the sales itself and how am i getting those numbers 
because my ratios are consistent over the last five years, just with a small up and down, but more or less around the same region. So, you don't want the future, I will take the same ratio. So, just by knowing what will be the sales for the next year, just by forecasting the sales number for the next year, rest all can be computed automatically. That is the prime motive behind the usage of ratios. They will help me to prepare future financial statements quite comfortably. With a minimum number of assumptions, I can make the future financial statement which will help me in doing the valuations. Right? When we do the equity valuation part, here we will cover only the basics of valuation. But the next level where we do the whole heart and soul of equity valuations, we will see that all these techniques are used in a very great deal in terms of doing the valuations of the companies. So, that is one major benefit of using ratios. You can project the earnings and the future cash flows. Because uh, historical statements, Last year's balance sheet, last year's P&L, even an accountant will do. You don't need to bother about them because it's a process of listing out all the transactions which have happened and maintaining a proper book entries for each one of them. But when we are talking of futuristic financial statements, I cannot make a full book. I cannot make transaction by transaction. I'll have to make some assumptions to prepare a future financial statement. And ratios will help me in making much better future financial statements rather than projecting something in the A. Right? So that is one advantage. Two, we can estimate the flexibility, evaluate the flexibility of the firm. How much, the, how much is the liquidity of the company? To what extent cash is remaining with the company? How much flexible is it in terms of changing its structure? So, that kind of scenarios, how much is the efficiency of the company year over year? Is it improving? Is it deteriorating? What is happening with respect to the efficiency of the company? And similarly, I can assess the management's performance. From multiple dimensions, I can assess, okay, profitability. Did they really increase or did they decrease? Some other aspect, okay, the uh, return on equity or share price, earnings per share, did it really go up or did it fall? If it has gone up means probably the management has done something better. Otherwise, the management did not do anything better which will help the share price to typically go up or profitability of the company to typically go up. And it can also help me in looking at uh, how my competitors are doing and how my company is doing over a period. Has it been some kind of an improvement in the profitability every year? Or is it a similar kind of a profitability? Individually, when I look at numbers, they will always look like company is growing. But the real pictures don't come when I look at just the numbers. Only when I convert everything into a kind of a ratio where I neutralize the size and look at, then only the true picture will come out. Right? Okay? Probably assets are growing, sales are growing, everything is growing. But are they growing, uh, sales growing faster than assets? Then it means my efficiency is much higher. Using a very few number of uh, resources, assets are nothing but resources of the company. Using a less number of resources, I am able to generate a big amount of sale, which is an indication of efficiency of the company. Right? Okay, assets are growing, sales are growing. But probably assets would have grown so much, but sales would have grown so little. It's actually an indication that the efficiency has gone down. So, we don't know next year it may be even more badly impacted. Your sales are growing, but at the cost, at, at a big cost. These kind of analysis will come out only when you compute ratios, but not looking at the absolute numbers itself. Right? Then, we can also compare our firm with the industry and also with the, the, the time, past to present and also probably competitors, all kinds of competitors in the industry. 
I can take one one number called industry average. I can see whether I am much better than the industry average or much worse than the industry average. And in which areas I am better than the industry average? In which areas I am worse than the industry average? That will tell me what are my areas of improvement for the next year. That is the way the management has to target its continuous improvement kind of a process. Right? So ratios are more powerful from all those things. We have already seen one model of ratios, which is the vertical size balance, uh, vertical common size analysis, both for PNL, balance sheet, and cash flow, which we are giving express everything as hundred. Remove the si size. If the total revenue is hundred, look at what is cost of goods sold. Look at what is uh, what are the other numbers, right? Same way in balance sheet, make the total assets as 100 and do the calculations for the remaining. Now, typically, though ratio analysis will give a lot of benefits for us, there is no meaning if I am looking at them in isolation. Right? Probably the uh, old time textbooks used to talk about the ideal current ratio is 2 is to 1. Or probably today also the same copy paste might be continuing. But in reality, they have no meaning when I look at them in isolation because today the way the businesses is done is completely different from what it was a few decades back where the books were written. Right? There, the focus was primarily with respect to manufacturing industry. But today there are whole a lot of industries whose characteristics are completely different from a typical manufacturing industry. So, for a bank, if they maintain a current ratio of 2 is to 1, it becomes a very pathetic situation for them. Right? So, they have to maintain much, much lesser than that because for them, the most motive is rotating. And if they are keeping a current ratio so much, it becomes a very badly impacting scenario for them. So, every industry has its own limitations in terms of the numbers. So, in isolation, there is no meaning to, the, to any kind of a ratio which I am computing. It should always be looked at in comparison either with the historical past or with respect to the competitors. So, there is nothing called uh, an absolute value. No meaning to a textbook value that this should be equal to this much. Debt equity ratio of 2 is to 1. There are so many companies with zero debt today. Why 2 is to 1? Probably then if I say that the company is not performing well, then probably Infosys is the first company which has to be said it's a non-performing company altogether. Because for right from the beginning of the company, it was running on zero debt. Right? So, uh, again, the way the businesses are done, almost all the big companies for that matter, Maruti Suzuki, close to zero debt. Hero Motor, I mean, recently they have taken, but yeah, for a, for a significant number of years, they were with zero debt or close to zero debt, negligible kind of debt. So, there are so many bigger companies, even a manufacturing companies, right? Probably its competitor, uh, TVS Motors must be having a huge debt also. So, each company has its own style today. You have to compare only within the industry or with respect to the past to typically come out with, are they losing something? Are they gaining something because of each of them? And one, one single ratio cannot be viewed in isolation. Probably, I have to link it with many other ratios. Right, simply saying, oh, these guys' uh, debt is not high. Debt to equity ratio is much lesser. If I just make some conclusion just by looking at that one single number, probably I am making a wrong conclusion. Okay, if this is lesser, what else could be impacting? What else could be impacting? Should I look at some other ratios? Okay, this company's uh, current ratio is very high. Probably which means inventory could be very high. I am just making a flow. Okay, current ratio is very high because inventory is high. If the inventory is high, is it resulting in sales also much higher? Our inventory is high and sales are not growing up. Then I will treat it as a negative thing. But if the inventory is high but still the sales is growing up, I will look at it as a positive factor. I cannot just make a conclusion just because the inventory is high here, the company is not progressing much. So, I have to look at the chain completely and give some kind of conclusions.